had my mom handling this week. I think she handling it well. Right now, she's just in the process of getting a bunch of tickets for the game. So we'll see as the week goes on how stressed or excited she gets. <laughs> so we'll see. What were some of those battles like during high school against against your brother? I guess he was the one throwing the ball, but uh, yeah. the one most of I mean, I like to think I did. But, you know, I always told him, if I get a chance to play against you, all the times you told on me, wore my clothes, because he's bigger than me. So I think around middle school, he started wearing my clothes, wearing my shoes. So I told him, if I get a chance to hit you, and I could do it without getting in trouble, I'm going to take every opportunity I can take. How much, uh, you know, back and forth has there been, maybe not necessarily this week, or if there has been this week, but leading up to this, you know, this season? Oh, I mean, leading up to it ever since. Ever since he, he, he thought he was getting a little bit bigger, you know, when he got to college, you know, he'd been saying he going to run me over. If he see me on the sideline, he's not going to step out of bounds. You know, I told him, you know, you, you can try it. I'm, I'm still older than you. Like, you still got little boy strength. I'm, I'm grown, you know. So, uh, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm just I – ain't, I ain't even going to say nothing to him this week. I'm not going to text him. I'm not going to call him. I don't want to see – I might block him on all my social media. I don't want to <laughs> see it. The only thing I want to think about is if I see him, he going to feel all – 18 years of us living together. On a positive note, <laughs> you, <laughs> you're a guy that had to wait your turn. What advice have you given him while he's kind of doing the same thing in this uh, I'm just telling him, like, you got to stay focused. Um, you can't let the situation, you know, you really don't got no control outside of what you do on the field, what you do on the practice field, or whenever you get in game. So, you know, just keep, just keep focusing on the little things. Just keep showing the coaches you care. Go to film, do the extra things. Especially at quarterback, you know, kind of like when Jalen uh, Hurts was here freshman year and it was him, I think Blake, you know, you got to do the things as a quarterback to win over the team. So I tell him all the time, like, the little things that, you know, you might not think is important, that might be something that wins over somebody in the locker room. So you got to do those things also. So I want to go back to the mom's stress of meter. When, when can you tell when she's really feeling it? I can tell when she's feeling it because she'll, she'll call me. <coughs> and then text me. So she'll text me in the morning, and then I'll respond. She'll call me before practice, then she'll text me after practice, and then she'll call at night. That's when I know her stress meter is getting up there. So this week, are you expecting about 10 phone calls a day? Yeah, I'm expecting the phone calls to be up there. <laughs> so aside from the war <laughs> being on, um, what does Mississippi State you know, present, especially running back Colin Hill, the challenge of defending him, tackling him? Yeah, I mean, Mississippi State, they have a good offense. You know, the running back Colin Hill, you know, he's elusive, shifty. You know, he's kind of a shorter, more squatty, powerful guy. So, you know, when you hit him, you got to bring your feet. And then we got to, you know, rally guys to the ball and uh, get some knockback tackles. But, you know, I'm excited. You know, it's a, another good running back we get to see. So, you know, you should be developing your skills this week so you can use them, you know, to go out there and, and uh, you know, go out there and tackle him. What, what this, especially as a secondary, what did y'all learn from watching the film from the – the last game and just kind of what what can you improve on do moving forward? Um, watching the film from the last game, you get to see how, you know, the mess up, when you mess up in a secondary, you know, is something that really is. Um, that's something that people really see. You know, you don't always get to see the D line, you know, or the linebackers. You don't see when they jump out their gaps. But if somebody in the secondary misses a tackle, usually you're the last person in line defense. So, you know, your mistakes in the secondary really get highlighted. You know when people watch the games, but from the game, all you can take away for real is, um, you know, the importance of your angles when you're coming in and when you're tackling. You can't be overrunning a runner, and also like just because the first guy makes contact, the second guy you can't slow up. You know, you need to be able to knock him back. You know, get more guys around the ball. You know, trying to hit the runner. Xavier has talked about, and other players have really. Uh, opponents, opposing offenses, change things up, do stuff that y'all don't expect. Mm-hmm. Is there anticipation of that sometimes in games, or, or do you just kind of – how can you deal with that if you don't prepare for something that they're throwing at you? I mean, you know, that is something that's kind of hard, kind of challenging, because, you know, we're going to get – we'll always get people's best game. Like, nobody ever just says, okay, we got Alabama. No, it's – I want to make a statement against Alabama. So, you know, a lot of times they don't do what, what we've seen on film or what they've done against other people. Um, what you try to do is take what your your base rules and you try to apply them as much as you can. But you know, sometimes out on the field, 
you know, it's going kind of fast. Or, you, you know, you probably thinking one thing, somebody else thinks, thinking another. And that's when you got to communicate, you know, get everybody on the same page. So that way, you know, busting coverages don't happen. And, and when you play good players, you know, mental errors are like little mistakes. Like that turns into points. You know, it's not like playing against a, a team you sh like not as good or a team you should be that if you make a mistake, it's like, okay, well, we can fix it. But now when you play good teams and you make a mistake, those turn into touchdowns. People outside the program might be a little bit surprised to see the numbers that Smitty's putting up and just the role that he has in offense. What have you seen from him since last season? Man, I've been I've been guarding Smitty when since he first came in when I when I was still playing corner. So I mean I always knew how good he was. I feel like everybody I mean, if you don't know Devontae Smith's name by now, you still think he's a he's one of the lesser receivers, he's a third receiver in the core, like you probably need to wake up because he runs routes. He doesn't take a lot of time running his routes. He gets into his routes. He blocks. He finishes runs. You know, he competes. You go out there and compete. Compete some practice too. Bet like hands, jumping. I mean, Smitty. I mean, Smitty. Like he one of the top receivers in, in in the nation. I mean, like we got all our three receivers, our four receivers, all the four best receivers in the nation, in my opinion. Is there an extra emphasis on? That? Or winning pretty this week, with, with you know your game kind of being scrutinized now by the committee. Um, uh, I mean, not really winning pretty, but um, you know we're trying to go out there and dominate. But that's nothing that hasn't changed over the course of the season. Like we feel like we should go out there and be able to dominate any team that that's put in front of us. So uh, I know everybody's focusing on that. You know, you know, especially since the mistakes that we have made um, last week. We need to go out there and clean up those mistakes so now we can put on an even more dominant performance. What has that locker room been, what's that locker room been like this, this in practice on the uh, practice field in the locker room? What has it been like in the last few days after that loss? Uh, I feel like you can you can tell a little bit more sense of urgency in some of the players. Um, you know, not a lot of scrutiny is going on in the locker room. You know, everybody's coming together. Everybody realizes that now is the time we need to come together as a team and put all our energy forward to trying to be as perfect as we can be. When you look back at the week of practice leading up to LSU and even like right before the game, it, was there any like how what what was the team's mindset like? In, in hindsight, is there anything that was maybe like a sign or something that wasn't as it should have been? No, nah, there was no sign. Everybody was still. You know, like I said, we're still trying to focus on dominating the, the, the opponent. You know, at the end of the day, that was a faceless opponent, and we try to go in there and dominate. But you know, like I said, mistakes that you can't have, you know, they happen. So, you know, there was no sign. Um, you know, we're just trying to dominate, and now we got to take take that and, and put it into this week of practice. Since we lost one. Is that it? Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.